morning, TCIP. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Are we ready to start 2024 on fire for Jesus? Come on, you know, 2023 is gone after the day. Let's look forward to what Jesus is going to do through your family, through your individual walk, and your church. Amen? All right, we got a big announcement here. Miss Amy. The big announcement is Mike's going to sing at it and dance, he said. <laughs> yeah, Mike. January 27th, it's a Saturday. We are having our second annual volunteer appreciation dinner. Um, it's from 6 to 8. We're going to do it a little bit different this year. There will be no entertainment besides Mike. It, but we are going to do some door prizes and some drawings and things like that. So it is catered, so we do ask that you sign up. We will have a sign-up sheet out in the foyer and at the children's desk starting next week. Sign-ups will go until the 24th. That's a Wednesday. We ask that you please be mindful of that because it is catered, and so Ms. Deborah needs to know exactly how much to order. So um, get your name on there, put a total, and we'll see you on the 27th. Thank you, dear. If you volunteered or done anything with the church, we want to say thank you with this dinner. It's a lot of fun. Again, I'm not singing, so don't even go there because y'all don't want to hear all that. But we're going to give some door prizes. It's going to be a cool thing to just come and fellowship together. Tonight, 6 to 6.30 is our communion service. Guys, if you've ever wondered what communion was all about, you want to be here tonight. You know, we're going to get together and we're going to just blast off in 2024 on the right foot what communion and taking Jesus in is all about. And John's going to explain it like you've never heard it before. I think it's going to clear up a lot of, 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 of things about communion and what it stands for. Amen? Now, no Wednesday night. We're going to take off because everybody's going to be partying tomorrow and, then, you know, all that mess. So anyway, are we ready to worship Jesus? Well, let's all stand up. Forrest and Linda Blackwell, I want to say hello to members of our church are going to open us up in prayer, and let's have a Jesus day. Amen? Amen. All right. Good morning, church family. Um, just wanted to say Happy New Year's Eve day, and um, thinking about New Year's coming tomorrow, you know, reflecting on 2023 and planning for 2024, thinking about hope, and um, that may be sometimes hard to think about hope when we have hard seasons in our life and, you know, we think about the state of the world. But as believers, we have Christ in our life and we have um, the gift of eternal hope. So I just want to encourage us to go into 2024 full of hope and anticipation of God working all things out according to his plan. So um, the verse I've selected is from Romans 5. Uh, 1 through 5, and it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now we'll pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for everything you've done for us and, and all the blessings that you've given us. Father, I thank you for the, for the freedom and the privilege to, to be in your house today to worship you. I pray, Father, for all the pe people here in our congregation and the um, for for good health and safety through throughout this new year um, father I, I pray that you'll just uh, open our, our minds and our hearts to to receive the message that bro brother John's brought to us today these things I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen All right, church, let's go hug somebody. Let's start playing. Come on, say hello to somebody. Let's get ready. Let's get excited for 2024.
chains I'm a prisoner no
Martha Church. Come, Lord Jesus, today we are going to begin an incredible, what I have found in my own life to be an incredible series. You know, I've been preaching for 50, for 50 years, 40 of it in this church. Let me say something about that first. Tonight, we are going to have a communion service at 6. won't last very long. But we're going to get into the depth of what real koinonia, what real fellowship is and how it operates and how we talk to, are, are to approach it. And it's a very solemn service tonight and it won't last long at all, but come down here and, and learn some things about what we call the Lord's Supper that perhaps you didn't know when you came in. That's at 6 o'clock this evening. And I'm very, very excited about it. But I'm just as excited about our series that, you know, I'm big on series so I don't know how long, normally when I say it's a very short series, it lasts six months. And I think that's what's happening here. Because I, have, I had a lot of options on the title of the series, and I chose this one. Speaking Jesus, part one. Speaking Jesus, part one. What, you're, what you will discover is that the kingdom of God has a language all its own. You ever notice that when you talk to somebody and you're telling them about the atonement, you're telling them justification, substitution, adoption, sanctification, and glorification, in your own words, they still look at you, family members or people that you work with or whatever, they still look at you like you've lost your mind when it makes perfect sense to you. You see, what you're doing is you're speaking Jesus. Jesus had a hard time getting people to understand his language. What we need to become, let's just look at our number one, our first quote. In order to, to, in order to understand our purpose as a church and as an ecclesia, we must learn to speak Jesus fluently. In 2024, we're going to teach this church, and I hope we've done it in the past, but more than ever before, we're going to concentrate like a laser beam on how to speak Jesus. We are going to become spiritual linguists. Spiritual kingdom linguists that whenever we sit down with somebody, we're going to recognize real fast that they were either speaking a foreign. See, the atonement and Christ is foreign to people. Now, if you think I'm exaggerating, how was, Je look, you know your Bible. Jesus wasn't, what they say when they heard Jesus? He's out of his mind. We don't understand what he's saying. We can't communicate with him. The greatest enemies of Jesus were religionists. Churchgoers, synagogue members, the Sanhedrin, the leaders had no clue out of all of their law and of all their Talmud and of all the Mishnah and all the other uh, uh, commentaries on the Old Testament. They never spoke Messiah. They did not speak Jesus. So we need to become kingdom Minded, and we need to speak it. Let's look at what linguist means. Let's just come up with that definition. This is right out of the, this is not revelation. This is right out of the college dictionary. A person accomplished in languages. So I ask today, how much Jesus do you speak? I want to I give you a couple of examples. In, and I don't remember, it was either in 1972 or 1973, I was an 18-year-old kid, a preacher boy, just surrendered to the ministry. I surrendered to preach in 1972. And so I don't remember if it was 1972 that we went or 1973. It probably 73 because of all the work we put into it. But we were asked to go to Japan. Our church was asked to send people to Japan for a mission trip. And Brother Doug White, my mentor and my the, my real spiritual father, he passed away uh, about a year ago, I guess, maybe not that long ago. But he decided to handpick a group of people to go with him to Japan to spread the gospel. We spent months, months learning enough Japanese. We have to, I think it was twice a week where we had, we had uh, language lessons in Japanese so that we could still communicate at least the basics, not the language itself, but the basics on how to say hi. And see, isn't it funny that I still remember some of the words after all of these years without ever speaking it again? Gomen kudasai. Jiji kaze harimarimats kambayin kokai no shikoi ne oide kudasai. What I just asked you was, will you come to church with me this evening? 
Gomen kudasai means excuse me please. And it's a very humble word. It means when it says, gomen kudasai, kudasai is please. I know that, but I don't know it. I hope I'm, it's going to make sense in just a moment. But of all the things that I learned about the language of Japan that, I, that are still in my memory today, ask me if I speak Japanese. Not a word. I'm only, I'm only parroting what somebody taught me even though I didn't know the meaning. So that's not speaking a language. And I think the same thing occurs in the church. We parrot what we have heard, but we really don't speak Jesus. So we put things up on our wall that remind us to be good and live and laugh and love. and I've got them. And we consider that speaking Jesus. That is not speaking Jesus. That's parroting what somebody else said to interpret the language. Don't live by somebody else's interpretation of this book. Learn it yourself. And see, that, that took a lot of work. That trip to Japan was hard. We did not get in five-star hotels. We, we slept on floors. We had rice um, pillows behind curtains, behind paper curtains in these little backdrop hotels that were nothing. And I re but you know what I remember about it? I remember they gave assignments. We had services in the evening. It was so exciting because I don't know how it all worked, but I'm telling you, and there's people still alive my age that were with me as teenagers that'll confirm this. We would bring our van into certain city. We were given the far northern island of Hokkaido. And within Hokkaido is Obihiro, Japan, which is a city. There were not, not, any, not one American lived on that island, the far northern island of Japan. The seventh fleet with the USS Enterprise had been into Tokyo Bay, and there were riots going on in Tokyo because the Japanese did not want, for some reason, anything nuclear coming near them. So there were riots going on in the streets. We were handed a piece of paper. See, Brother Doug, he enlisted preacher boys like me. He enlisted singers that could sing with us. And then he would assign us certain things to go and be somewhere at a certain time. My first engagement was on a mountaintop just north of Obihiro, Japan, on the island of Hokkaido. It was called, and Rusty, you may be familiar with this, I was not, a Loran transmitting station. It was made up of 13 American sailors who sat there all night watching over missiles coming in from Russia or China to be the first warning to Japan that a, that a nuclear war was inevitable. There were 13 of them, and they had no contact with the Japanese. And I, I remember spending all day on that train. I remember going through a leper colony and looking down at the people that were lepers to my left, and it was an open train on a small gauge, and we chugged our way into the mountains. And I remember looking down into this leper colony and people looking up at me through the train for help. And I finally got there, and I thought, I'm an 18-year-old kid. These guys are grown men. What are they going to think? They loved me. They just wanted to see another American kid. And we, I preached Jesus to them. They, were, they didn't, I don't know if anybody got saved or anything. That really wasn't the point that day. The point was we made contacts with people. We would go into town. We would go into towns, pull over, and the whole town was waiting and clapping as we walked through the lines of people to where we were going to preach and sing. They would just clap and shout. And we would get to the, always, we'd get to the main, uh, I wouldn't be saying this if it cannot be confirmed because this sounds so outright. We didn't even know. We didn't set it up, but they knew we were coming. And we would walk through lines of people, some of them in thousands. One city, I don't remember the name of the city, but uh, see, a bear is the symbol of, of, of Hokkaido, a bear. And so whenever we would get to these cities, we would walk through these lines of clapping people, and we would just wave. It's like a parade. And in one, we pulled in many times, but the biggest one, they had probably 10 tents set up. 
And each tent had probably 20 or 30 waiters and waitresses. And they sat us down on the ground and they cooked the meat right as we sat down on the ground with them. They cooked meat and they made all kinds of presentations. Now we did have an interpreter. His name was Lim, but he could only be with one group at a time. And he was with us that day. So he was telling us, they're honoring you. They want to come to the services tonight. So one of us would preach and then Lim would interpret and then we would give an invitation. And incredible things happened on that trip. But I still don't speak Japanese. So what we're going to do in 2024 is teach the kingdom of God and to learn how to speak Jesus. Some people say, well, that's Greek to me. Have you ever noticed that some, see, every word in this book makes sense to me. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you. Every word in this book makes perfect sense. Casey, I know it makes sense to you too. You look at it and you go, Genesis, there's Jesus. Exodus, there's Jesus. Leviticus, there's Jesus. On. Prophets, there's Jesus. Isaiah, there's Jesus. There's the crucifixion. Hab um, Micah, there's the birth. There's where he's going to be born. This is how he's going to live. This is how he's going to die. This is going to come back from the dead. Even those that are right, he was crucified with one. And, 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 and you go, I get, I speak Jesus. But a lot of people don't. They live on somebody else's word and that won't get you very far. It has to be personalized. You're going to hear other voices. There are other languages that are being taught right now over the, and you know I don't do internet of any way, shape, or kind, except me, I'm just learning how to, to, what do you call it, text. And we're going to talk about that in about 30 seconds. It's awful. That's what I've learned. It's awful. But it wasn't, it, it was a setup. I'll tell you about the setup. It, it was, I got ambushed. I was ambushed. Is Amy here? Amy, Gallman, are you here? Where, you ambushed me. Where are you, Amy? You ambushed me. <laughs> then, then what do you call it? Un unfold your arms. We're going to talk about it in just a minute. And I'll give you a right to rebuke my argument, which you can't do. I've known Amy since you. Did I, didn't I chase you down one? I, chase, I remember chasing you down that night. Boy, I was mad at you. I thought it was at nighttime. It was after church. I got mad at her and I chased her down and told her to straighten up and fly right. How old were you then? 35, 40? 17 years old. Okay. <laughs> Some people, now, there's, there's different voices that are going on, different languages that are being spoke right now. We have three enemies as Christians and as the church. We have three enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Well, there is a language of the world, and that's what most people participate in. It's a language of self-indulgence. It's a language of self-promotion. It is a language to influence people in other ways other than through Jesus the Messiah. You also have the voice of the, of the flesh. The voice of the flesh is always crying out within us. The book of Romans teaches that once we become justified, the Holy Spirit enters into each one of us but that doesn't mean that he kicks the flesh totally out. It's ready to pop up like a jack-in-the-box. It's ready to get tightly strung. That's how come you can be in love with Jesus on Sunday morning, and by the time somebody takes your parking lot on by Sunday afternoon in Walmart, you're ready to kill them. So you have three different languages that are being taught right now other than speaking Jesus. The world, the flesh, and then the devil himself will come up and change one or two words that allow us to d disobey God. In the Garden of Eden, God said, if you eat this, you shall die. And then Satan comes along, changes one little three, adds one little three-letter word. No, 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 you shall surely not die. And Satan's real good at twisting scriptures away from us so that we can't speak Jesus. I don't and, and here's the interesting thing. The Holy Spirit is the interpreter that you need sometimes when you're reading your Bible. 
and when you're praying. It's the, Romans says, we don't even know how to pray. We're so weak, we don't even know how to pray. But the, thank goodness, the Holy Spirit grabs that prayer right about here, straightens it up, puts a bow on it, and says, here's what the idiot John meant to say. And the prayer comes out acceptable to God. Because my prayers are pretty all over the place. I don't know about you. I know you're, I, mine aren't. Mine go all over. I mean, I'm, woo, where, where, I'm, oh yeah, I forgot about this. I got to go back to that, Lord. You know, make me handsome. Hadn't worked yet, but it's. <laughs> Jesus is the language of God. I want to show you something. I want you to turn, please, to Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. For, see, we're talking about a kingdom here. We're talking about a kingdom. The kingdom of God is here. The king, John said the kingdom of God. John the Baptist said the kingdom of God is at hand. Is, is at hand. Jesus said the kingdom of God is not at hand. It's here. So it's going to bring its own government. It's going to bring its own people. It's going to bring its own language. It's going to bring its own writing. It's going to bring its own understanding of, of global affairs. It, it is a, we, most people never get that. We are a kingdom in and of ourselves as the church. This is what Philippians, Paul says to the church at Philippi. Our citizenship is in heaven. If your citizenship is really in heaven, why don't you learn to speak Jesus? It's not hard. From which also we eagerly wait for his Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You look at the Old Testament prophecies and the foreshadowings through the ark and the ark of the covenant and the tabernacle and the temple and the kingship and David and the, and the kingdom of Israel and all of those other things. What they're doing is giving a foreshadowing of the coming kingdom. How it will be ruled by a descendant of King David. Messiah is that. Jesus is that. Where will he be born? We're told. Bethlehem or Bethlehem in English. We're told all those things. Now... For my illustration, and see, you're kind of in luck this morning because I'm really, I'm about done because we're going to, I told myself if I have to really shorten this thing up this morning, I will because I don't want to get into next week this morning because I'm still looking myself. I don't even, I'm already looking and I've got some notes taken, but we're going to get through the introduction this morning before we really hit it hard next week. But now comes my illustration. Now, everybody here, everybody. With, this is no doubt in my mind. Everybody here knows what I'm about to tell you I discovered about cell phones. And I was set up. Because I had a flip, flip up phone. And by the way, isn't it interesting, Amy? They're coming back now. Um, don't ever argue with Amy Goldman. It is a losing prospect. But anyway, what I'm about to tell you, you're going to say, well, you're just a dummy. Right. I've always said that about myself when it comes to I don't own a computer. I still write letters with a feather ink pen. I still have a stamp that I put on the back in wax of the envelopes. Okay, I get all that. Not everybody does that. That's just the way I've done I, I, don't, I don't own a computer. I wouldn't know... Michelle, do I know how to turn on a computer? You're one of my daughters, do I? Say it out loud. No. Say it louder. No. Say it really loud. No. Hold out the no like you always do when you're mad. No. That's what I know. <laughs> no. Everybody knows that about me. If I want something, I, I'm a, I have a very nice library. I go to my library. I sit down at my, at my roll-top desk, and I start figuring things out, and I learn a lot of other things while I'm... So I don't, I, don't, I don't have the want to in me. I just, it's just not there. People say, you need to, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I found out something just last week that I did not know that every one of you have known all your lives. Why didn't you tell me? That is, I, I st even, I've had it, how, how long, Amy, have I had the phone? A couple of years? A couple of years. So that's a, okay, but I still do this when I'm texting. A, space, C, space, P-ster, P-E, 
A S. Then I forget how to spell it because it's taken so long. But let's just take the word Peaster. Every time early on I typed in the name Peaster, it came out really stupid stuff. It would say Peon or Poltergeist or Dog Poo Poo. I, it just, you never knew what it was going to say, and it was so frustrating because I didn't know how to get it to say Peaster. So you just, I just get so aggravated with my own phone for talking back. It just, it talked back. Well, the other day, just four or five days ago, this last week, I looked down and I had, I had said something. And under that, where I have never looked because of my eyesight so bad, under that, the, the word that I was trying to type in, Peaster, came up. Have y'all seen that? I was so happy. I wrote in P-E, and guess what it did? It filled in the blank. All I had to do was push the real word Peaster underneath the bad Peaster, and it, went, it jumped from the bottom to the top in the list. I celebrated. I had a party. I drank. No. I was, I was so... I was so blown away by what I was looking at, I will never, I thought I got saved again. I, no, you don't understand. Now, now, after two years of owning the phone that she made me have, for the first time, then I started looking at words. All I had to do was put in A-T-O. Guess what came up? Not antonym, atonement. Wow! I don't even have to put space after atonement. It did it automatically. I told you y'all were going to know this, but at least rejoice that I have found the light. Amen. Well, in the middle of all that, I sit back. I was so happy. I just sat back in my chair by my roll top desk and my lanterns, and I thought to myself, this is what I thought. This is what really... This is what I thought to myself. This phone is now speaking my language. Mike, it learned how I talk. It's speaking my language. And I thought about God the Father, how happy he must be when he's trying to speak to us, but we're like cell phones that don't understand what he's trying to say. And so we try to correct him. And then one day, if you stick with it long enough and you hear Jesus and you hear his word and you hear his voice, one day you can actually start filling in the blanks of what he's trying to tell you. When he says atone, at atonement, when he says justification, you can just you fill in the blanks. When he says substitution, blank. When he says sanctification, blank, you got it. He doesn't have to spell it out for you. You hear his voice. And you know the language of your heavenly father. He's like trying to communicate with this cell phone called people. And certain people who, who start listening, be, they begin to know his language. They know how he talks and they can fill in the blanks with what he's trying to say. When you begin to hear the Holy Spirit, I'm going to have a little illustration for you. And the kids, you can ask Nanny after the services, this didn't happen. But I'm going to tell you something that she doesn't know. Okay, last I, I started walking again two miles a day. This was about a month or a month and a half ago. I know it doesn't show yet, but I'm trying. And Jody always has a chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes waiting on me when I get back from my walk. <laughs> I get that. But it, here's the interesting thing. It was very, very cold last week. And normally I just wear, you know, shorts and tennis shoes and a T-shirt and go and walk my two miles. But this day was extremely windy and extremely cold. And so I had to dress up and I started looking for my gloves. Couldn't find them in my toboggan. Couldn't find them in my toboggan. Probably left them at a football game somewhere this last football season. But I found my gloves. So when I got back, I laid my gloves on the kitchen table. So when I get back to the house, 
I put them on the kitchen table. Then a few hours goes by, and I looked, and there were the gloves on the kitchen, on the, on, near the stove, the oven. They've been moved. Then I go back a day or two later, and now they're on, in the bedroom on a side stand. And I'm thinking, these guys are putting themselves up. <laughs> we're getting closer to my chest of drawers in the bath that's just beyond the bathroom. So I thought, okay, I, I put them, I know where I put them, I put them on the table. The next day they were on the stove, and now they're in the bedroom. Those are smart gloves. You heard of smartphones? Those are smart gloves. Well, finally I walked, and I'm, I, why would I put them up? They're doing it themselves. <laughs> is that not right? <laughs> Courtney, is that right? <laughs> oh, you didn't answer. That's what I thought. So finally, a day or two ago, Jody says, will you please put your gloves up? I have moved them. I thought, oh, it was you. I was so disappointed because I thought the Holy Spirit was moving them for me. I said, okay. Then, okay. Now, now, and she walks away. And I can tell she's a little, you know, she, her aggravation is not much, okay? But <clears throat> I could tell she's thinking, put your gloves up. You got them out. I'm not your maid. Put them up yourself. That's what she's thinking. She just wouldn't say it. And don't ever marry a part of patchy woman. They will scat. They look nice. Then they'll ambush you. I mean, I got ambushed. So I, I you know me, I'm kind of, you know, John, and I, I grab the gloves, and as I'm going through the bathroom to go back to my chest of drawers, which are in a closet beyond the bathroom, I thought, this is too good. Put them back on the table. <laughs> Here I go, and right as I laid them down, I heard a voice. <laughs> Don't do that. Nobody else heard the voice. I did. John, don't do that. Why would you be obnoxious to a woman that loves you? Why would you want, I just, j just for the joke, she won't think it's funny. <laughs> and I argued a minute with the Lord about it, with the Holy Spirit about it. Can I just get a, one glove? No. I, surely enough, after a few minutes, I took the gloves and sadly walked back to the chest of doors, and I opened the chest of doors and stuck them in and shut it, and that's the last you ever heard of it. But see, I knew the voice of why, with all the stress that people are under today, why would I do something that would intentionally aggravate somebody? Why? But only because I'm just, it, to me, it, it wasn't aggravated. Well, I said, I knew it aggravated. I did. But it was the thing that the word that came to me was very serious. Don't do this. She doesn't need that right now. She doesn't need the aggravation and the stress that you put those gloves intentionally back there just to make her mad. Don't do it. And I listened, and believe it or not, I didn't do it. If you, now, we're going to stop right here because we need to get into the language that we're, we're going to look at over the next couple of months. What language did Jesus speak? How, what did he say? What is the language of the kingdom of God? Why would Jesus look at Pharisees and say, you know, you say this, but I say to you. And why were there such a, a gulf, a rift between the religion and the words of Jesus? They do not speak the same language. I want you to turn, please, to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, and we'll end with that. You see, these scriptures, these scriptures are the written word. Jesus is the living word. We'll talk about that in a few weeks to come. In the beginning was the word. That word in Greek is logos. It means the expressed image of God. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being. See, Jesus is even identified as being the Word. The Word of what? The Word of the kingdom. And he, the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. 
in this word was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not. I love that instead of comprehend, I love what can be translated, the, the, it could not extinguish the light. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. Now he was a, came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, John, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own and those who were his own did not receive him. There was a language barrier. But as many as understood him, as many as perceived what he was trying to say, who, who, who led his, read his lips, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And I love him. We'll stop with this one. And the word became, the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. And the Word became flesh and tented with us. Tabernacle dwells with us now. I'm so excited for this series. And if you really want to know how to speak Jesus, let me teach you. I'm learning myself. I want to, I want to be more fluent in Jesus than I ever have been in my life in 2024. And I know that you do too. Don't forget about tonight's service at six o'clock. I know many of you will not be able to be here, but you're gonna miss the real meaning of communion. We're gonna look at it in a way that you've never seen it before and explain some things on why we do it tonight at six o'clock. There's reasons, we're gonna explain that to you. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our prayer for this church in 2024, and I know we have a lot of people out this morning, but. It's still a prayer for everybody that's part of this church. That we would spend 2024, at least the first part of it, learning the language of the kingdom. We will speak Jesus. We'll learn. It takes discipline, folks. We didn't learn little sayings in Japanese overnight. We spent months studying Japanese. We're going to learn how to speak Jesus. We're going to make it real easy for you. But it takes discipline and it takes time. And Lord Jesus, as the church in Peaster begins a new year, 2024, may you bless us with hearing ears. May you bless us with mouths that speak the truth. May you bless us with the word, Jesus, the Messiah, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And as the pastor of this church, I now bless each participant in this service and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all it is in the name of Jesus of Nazareth Yeshua ben Nostri your only son and our only Savior amen I sure hope to see you tonight at six please stand for our final blessing our final blessing comes from Colossians chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 and let's read it for the, even the angels in heaven can participate with us are you ready to go here we go ready read let the word of Christ oh no 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 not good enough that didn't get past the roof ready let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another with songs and hymns and spiritual songs singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. See you tonight at 6. Be blessed.